Let's take a look at the elephant foot ferrule from Ramset Reed. Basic form of the ferrule is it has an enlarged foot for engagement with the concrete and to resist the applied loads. It has a cross hole for cooperation with a rebar and an internal thread. The internal thread typically in sizes from M10 to M20. And apart from different thread diameters, we have the ferrule available in different lengths as well to suit various applications. Additionally, different finishes. So we're talking typically zinc finish as well as hot dip gel and some stainless. For use downhand, so in far face applications where we want to fix the product to formwork, we have a couple of options available to us. One is the standard nailing plate which will be used with a couple of nails to fix it down into the timber base form. The other one is with a glue patch or a glue plate. So this is where we have a double-sided glue patch which will be applied to the plate and that can be fixed down to the formwork. Uh, the, this can also be used, both the nailing plate and the glue plate can be used in addition to an, a typical antenna cap in the top of the ferrule for applications where we're doing near face applications with a ferrule mounted in a chair. So we spoke about far face. The type of installation is very similar to what will be undertaken in a side form application as well. So engage the ferrule in the plate and plate gets fixed to side form and or base form. Uh, if using the nailing plates, nail the plate first and then install the ferrule into the plate. For applications where we're going to install near face, we will want to have a cap of some sort in the top of the ferrule to prevent ingress of concrete. So typically that's going to be an antenna cap or it can be either a nail plate or a glue plate. That gives us a position in the top of the form. The chair and ferrule height will be requ what's required to make up our panel thickness and that'll leave our, our insert flush, basically flush with the surface of the concrete. Whilst we don't need, for the elephant's foot, we don't need a, a rebar through the ferrule hole to generate capacity. All of the capacity comes from the enlarged foot of the ferrule. We can use the, the crossbar through the ferrule to help us tie it into the reinforcement. If, especially where we're doing near face applications in a chair, it becomes very easy to place the ferrule in its chair as an assembly in the formwork and then tie the bar off into the formwork, into the existing reinforcement in the formwork and that'll keep it safely in place. So the required items for installation, firstly our documentation, always make sure we've got the, the appropriate documentation at hand, the project information as well, that'll give us details on which insert has been specified, both by, or by length, by diameter and by finish. We need the correct insert, so check that what we've received on site and what we're using in the application is what's been specified. Tape measure to ensure that our insert is located correctly in our formwork. For applications where we're using a nail plate, we need nails and a hammer. And for all applications, make sure we have the appropriate system components, chairs, plates or caps to suit the style of installation being undertaken. Crossbars, as I said, they, they are used in near face applications to help us position. For far face applications where we are fixed to the form, we won't be needing the crossbar. So before we actually place the assembly in the concrete, in the, in the formwork and prior to placement of concrete, make sure we have the correct insert and make sure that we position it correctly in our formwork. So as a cast in item, we don't get a second chance at positioning. We need to make sure the position's absolutely correct, correct prior to pour 
um, and we should do that each and every time. Now we can move across to the form and have a look at the application of the product. Let's do a demo of the product in a Farface application scenario and then we'll set up the product to suit near face application as well and then pour the concrete. Let's take a look at the installation of the Ramset Reed Elephant Foot Ferrule in a Farface application. In this case, we'll look at the use of the glue-on plates. So for this application, we take, we've got a an standard ferrule in gel, take the nail plate, which is actually the glue-on plate version, stick one of the, the adhesive pads on the back. Prior to placing it on the form, obviously, let's just make sure that our dimensions are correct for location of the ferrule in the form. We're after a 200 millimetre dimension there, which we're seeing, so that's spot on. Prior to releasing the, the cover on the adhesive, centre up where the ferrule's going to locate, release the paper, stick it down, and the ferrule's good to go for the pour. The main thing to watch out for with any of the adhesive products is to make sure you comply with the manufacturer's recommendation regarding cleanliness of the formwork so that we get good adhesion of the sticker pad here to the formwork. And that's a Farface application install. Let's take a look now at the elephant foot reveal. So firstly, we'll remove the nail plates to give us access to the, to the ferrules that we cast into the concrete two days ago. Uh, in this particular case, the precast has been nice enough to remove the residual concrete in the top of the cap there. Typically that can be done with a uh, ball peen hammer. So just tap around the cap to loosen the concrete material and brush or blow it away. Uh, next, we spin the caps out of the ferrules, and that's typically done by applying some, some moment to the caps, get them turning, and we'll spin those out. Now, obviously, if we have a bit of time between access to the ferrules and actually wanting to put a fixture plate in place, leave the ferrules in for as long as possible. They act as a great dust cap so that we don't get site debris and other concrete getting into inside the ferrules and fouling the threads. <laughs> 